others in that. Al, O'Brien, any, any memories of, of, of Live Aid and, and what were you doing around that time? You know, the only way I can answer that is because I didn't have anything to do with Live Aid, but I do like chirping in every now and again. So can I tell you another quick Phil Collins and something Please? in there tonight, <laughs> which was basically the killer song, right? Both sides of the Atlantic. <clears throat> I was making my own solo album in 81 and he came over to the house. God bless him. He played for, for his friends for nothing. He never, ever charged his friends for, for work. I did four different projects with him, but this particular time it was my album. I played him some of my stuff. I said, you're all right with this, aren't you? He said, yeah. He said, so we were sat on the couch and we just learned how to light farts. Anal gas emissions, if you like. And uh, so we spent half an hour doing that. You know, this is Phil, for God's sake. I, 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 I just hope I'm not putting the wrong picture here, but talk about down to earth. You know, you couldn't have a better mate. You couldn't. So anyway, we finished doing all that. And we were going to go and see Omen. And time was ticking on. And he says, hey, hey. Brain, he called me Brain. He says, let me just play you one of the songs from my new album. I said, dude, I said, you know, the movie starts in 10 minutes. He said, just, just a little bit, okay. I said, all right then. So he, he kind of played with like duck fingers on the piano at that time. I'm sure he doesn't know, but then he just went, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. First thing I said, fuck, he's gone religious on me. What <laughs> is all this about? And I just said, dude, I said, we, don't, are you talking about what we were just doing half an hour ago? Something in the air tonight? He says, no, man, it's, it's my new song. I said, well, it's really good. Fine. Thanks a lot. Following morning, I had to go to, um, uh, what was the name? Hit and Run. Hit and Run. Steve will know them. And I had to go for a photograph for Phil for the album. And I'm walking through the office and I hear, bah, 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 boom, bah, boom, bah, boom, 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 I can, shit, I said, that's what he just played me last night. Said, Don't ever come to me if you want to know what a good record is, because I just thought it stunk at the time. And actually, I did, never did like it at, at, um, at the Live Aid concert. I think it sounds terrible with just a piano. He's better now than he ever has been. So let's make that clear. But, I mean, did you enjoy it when he just sat at the piano and played that song? It's all production, really. Great, great vocal, great drums. But if it wasn't for all those effects and, you know, the brilliant production, I think it was Steve Lilly White, was it? He used to make my tea when I used to play down at uh, Vertigo Records. <laughs> Made a cup of tea for us. Anyway, that was uh, that was it. That was my Phil Collins story. Another one. Can I just, Brian, Brian, quickly go on? You've played with a lot of people, or people have played with you. Brother, Thank you. BB King. Yeah. That's that's ridiculous. What happened? <laughs> I used to jam up at a friend of mine's uh, place in Bell Canyon here, just outside, uh, just outside LA, and uh, and um, uh, Eubanks, Kevin Eubanks, who was the music director. He'd get up and he'd play bass. He never played guitar. We had Albert Lee playing guitar and people like that. So he thought, I'm not going to try and compete with him. So he just played amazing bass, Kevin. So we were jamming and we'd jam for 10 hours, something like that. And he liked what I was doing because, uh, you know, I tried to less is more. I tried to not play over everybody else, which unfortunately always happens with the big jam session. And so um, he, thought, he called up and said, um, look, uh, Dr. John can't make it. Dr. John did all the piano parts on B.B. King's. Uh, could you sit in and do the Dr. John thing? I'll have to think about it. I've thought about it. Yes. So <laughs> there I was at the TV studios. He usually had about four run-throughs, BB, but uh, we just had one run-through and he was knocked out. So I was very pleased about that. So when it came to the show, I have a red jacket that, you know, it's like my thing. So I, I decided I'd wear it. 
Well, of course, you don't wear anything that could possibly be uh, more flattering, if you like, than the main artist. He comes walking on with his red jacket and he walks, Kevin's holding his arm and he looks over at me, he says, hey, what's going on here? And uh, Kevin said, Brian, you're going to have to, I said, don't worry, I'm taking it off. He said, no, no, he says, you look great, man. Keep on playing like you do. It was fantastic. Knocked out. I always think that that was right, like the pinnacle of uh, my career in a way. That and, that and Ross Conway, of course. <laughs> and Ross Conway, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Al, well, what about you? From you, from Nick, 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 go on, Nick. I was going to say, Al, we haven't, sorry, we've been gassing away. We haven't heard from you for a while. Well, I can, the only uh, Live Aid story I can relate is that we were never involved. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everyone hated you. That's about as good as it gets. I mean, I, I, uh, actually, I was flying back to England on the day of the Live Aid concert. But, but to make up for it, I did buy the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well done, Ali. Well, um, another question we often ask is um, funny meetings, unexpected uh, pairings of people. And obviously that, that moves on quite nicely from, from the Band-Aid video where you have that, that weird kind of mix of people all brought together for, for a certain reason. But have any of you ever worked with, with unexpected people or appeared on the same bill as, as strange people or, or, or been involved with a, with a, it, it been at a situation where... Uh, there's, there's the most unlikely pairing of people, be it on mm. stage or, or privately, you know, maybe at a dinner or something. Well, I have actually a funny situation going on now because um, I'm actually working with a guy from Megadeth who, <laughs> who is completely plug, different. Plug, 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 plug. Plug, plug, yeah. Plug. <laughs> but it's just, it's so weird working with a metal head, so to speak, you know, but it's like we get along so well that it kind of works. Yeah, so. I, I love that. I love that because that, we mentioned Alice Cooper earlier. And of course, Alice Cooper's great friend uh, was Groucho Marx. And they, they oh. hung out together a lot and used to play golf together. But I just love the idea of just the two of them strolling around the golf course. And yeah, yeah. I, I just, I, it just makes me, I, I've always loved that kind of thing. And that, sometimes you see um, photographs of, of of really unexpected people together because they've obviously run into each other somewhere. But. Yeah, well, mostly when we were we were on tour, we were, I mean, we were um, sort of matched with bands that are in our uh, genre. Yeah, you know, so obviously we had things in common with them, but you know, they were they weren't unexpected meetings. You know, um, let's see, uh, nah, I really got nothing. <laughs> no, no. The, the thing is, though, Ali, with with with, with say us, the band. So you, the band, us, the band. So basically, it was part, it was a very eighties band, wasn't it? It was, it was so you'd oh, yeah. be linked up. I know you did stuff with, with the Furs and all that stuff, and the Fix, uh, another fixation of mine. But but yeah. so the Fix and whatever. So it was very much the eighties thing, and and we must say that we we. We just saw your brother is now out doing a tribute band with a flock of seagulls. Um, mm -hmm. Let's put let's put it uh, politely. It's not exactly um, what the band are about, but bless him, he's doing that stuff. So, but you are very active with it. And I've heard the stuff, and it's fucking mm -hmm. brilliant what you're doing. Thank you, you know, if you farted into a tin, I'd still say it was great. <laughs> but this is really good stuff you're doing. It's yeah. it's really good, and and you sound the parts I'm, I'm it's not bum tish no 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 it's uh well i've always been able to do more than bum tish of course but <laughs> that's what i was allowed to do um no it's, it's just funny the way that worked out and i actually enjoyed i mean i've always been a bit of a not a metal head but a you know alternative rock person and uh you know i used to get teased relentlessly on the road for that what are you listening to that for I'd say I used to say the same thing to them. What are you listening to Bowie for? Because you know <laughs> they would put Bowie on the tour bus non-stop. Actually, a funny story about that. I was accused, not guilty, but accused of nuking Bowie <laughs> on the bus. <laughs> what? One day, one day the, the other three band members got on on the bus, and then the Bowie tape had been nuked. <laughs> In the microwave, and I, I, I took the fall for it. It was even to this day. My wife called me. Oh yeah, the man who knew Bowie. 
but why but why was that surely that was, it was, was that... and they would just play that uh, album relentlessly all day all night it's like i was so sick of it but i didn't nuke it i swear <laughs> Which album was it it was but, but, um, but, but, but Ali, but, but, but what, what, what's your band called? Plug, plug. What is it? Plug, plug, plug. Um, Final Wave. Uh, really Final good wave. stuff. Uh, so you, you're enjoying this sort of research? I mean, I mean yes, I am. Um, we, we play uh, you know, some covers, but we're really aiming at doing our own stuff. And uh, the song that's actually out on, uh, on YouTube is uh, one of Andy's, Andy Freeman's uh, concoctions. And uh, I don't know, it really, it really works, as you say. It's something new, something enjoyable, working with new people and, you know, different thoughts and ideas. So.